In this video, we're going to talk about another type of simple machine. And this one is known as the incline plane. Now this type of device, you may not think of it as a simple machine, but it actually is very useful. It can make the work that you're trying to do, you can do the work with a lot less effort. Let me illustrate it this way. Let's say we have a 500 Newton crate that we want to lift. And we want to lift it up a distance of one meter. The minimum force that we need to lift up this crate is going to be 500 newtons. Now let's say that the ramp is five meters long. Instead of lifting up the crate directly, another thing that we could use is we could use the incline plane to help us to lift up this object. So we can get it from point A to point B using less force. The question is how much force do we need to move it up the ramp or the incline plane? Well, if we take the ratio of these two distances, five divided by one, which is five, this tells us that the force that we're gonna need is five times less to move it up the ramp. So here it's 500. The force that we need here is gonna be 100. So notice what this machine allows us to do. It allows us to move the box up a height of one meter, but through another path with a lot less effort. Instead of going from C to B, which will require 500 newtons of force, we can go from A to B, which will require less effort or 100 newtons of force. And so the incline plane makes it easier to move heavy objects from one place to another, especially if you need to go up. However, there is a cost though. This doesn't come free. And the cost is the distance. To go from C to B, it's true that we need to apply a greater force, but only over a shorter distance. So if we were to calculate work, which is force times distance, that's 500 newtons times one meter. So that's a work of 500 joules. Now we can go to from A to B, which requires less effort, but I mean, we're going for a longer distance. If we calculate the work going from A to B, that's 100 newtons times five meters, which is also 500 joules. So the simple machine doesn't really reduce the amount of work that we need to do. The work is still the same regardless of what path we take, A to B or C to B, the work doesn't change. However, the effort that's required does change. It's harder to go from C to B because we need to apply more force, even though it's for shorter duration. But going from A to B, we can apply less force, but for a longer distance. So the incline plane makes it easier to get the work done, but it doesn't change the amount of work that needs to be done. And it's important to understand that concept. Now, the situation that we're dealing with here is a frictionless incline plane. So this is an ideal scenario. But in reality, whenever you're moving an object across a surface, you need to deal with friction. There's always going to be some amount of friction present, which can vary based on the two types of surfaces. And so the amount of force that you're going to need to move it up the ramp is going to be more than 100 in reality. It could be 120, it could be 130, it could be 140. It's not going to be as high as 500. But because of friction, it's going to be more than 100. And just as you can't make money without paying taxes, at least you really shouldn't, you have to pay your taxes, you can't really do work without paying energy to friction. Anytime you do some type of work or exert some type of force, especially across the surface, some of the energy that you're applying to get the work done is going to be spent on friction or dissipated as heat in some instance. And that's just a fact of life. Friction and dissipated heat is basically the tax in the energy world. You can't escape that. But nevertheless, the incline plane is a very useful machine that can reduce the amount of effort that's required 
to do some type of work. Now, another thing we need to talk about is something called mechanical advantage. The mechanical advantage basically tells us the amount of force that, or rather the ratio of the two forces that the machine really assists us with. So it requires 500 newtons of force to go from C to B, but we're only using 100 newtons of force to go from A to B. So you could think of this as the input force and as the output force. So this machine made our effort five times less. So we can say that its mechanical advantage is five. Our effort has been reduced by a factor of five. So that's the mechanical advantage of this particular incline, it's the ratio of the two forces. If the mechanical advantage is less than one, then you're applying more force than the machine is putting out. But if the mechanical advantage is greater than one, like five, then the machine is making your work five times easier. It's multiplying the force by a factor of five. So even though you're applying a force of 100, it would have been equivalent to applying a force of 500 going up. So it's making the work five times easier. So that's the basics of the inclined plane. That's how it works. So now you know how to calculate the mechanical advantage and the force that's required to go up the ramp without taking friction into account. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be educational. Thanks for watching.